If you ever play the Dark Souls games, you know that Miyazaki loves his poison swamps. So today, I have decided to fully realize Miyazaki's dream by putting the poison swamp inside of my body. Now, everywhere I go is practically a poison swamp. Using my limited knowledge of modding, I have turned the life ring into something that combines both poison and toxic to give me what I call super poison. For comparison, here's how much damage regular poison does, here's how much toxic does, and here's how much damage my new super poison does. Throughout the run, I felt that this was becoming a little too easy, so I ended up increasing it a few times, with the final poison looking like this. As always, if you like the suffering I afflict upon myself, feel free to drop a sub or a like, or comment some ideas for runs you'd like to see in the future. Now let's get into it. To start off, we're picking the warrior class because it has the highest amount of starting health. I considered going cleric at first, because I thought having access to the heal miracle would be useful. The cleric only starts with 10 vigor, and the miracle is less than astounding. The trade-off of having 4 less vigor wasn't really worth it. Plus the warrior starts with a lot more strength. We start making our way to Gunder, and I figured there's no shot I was going to get it first try. So I figured I might as well go ahead, pull the sword out so I can start the fight faster for the second attempt. But since I was already there, I might as well give it a shot. To my surprise, I was actually able to pull it off. Even though I only started the fight with two Estus, half health, and automatically whiffed a parry, I was able to take him down fairly quickly. What helped as well, is that when you're doing a Visceral, you're immune to damage. So I was able to get a good chunk of health taken down when my health stopped taking away. After dumping some levels into Vigor, I get an early Estus with the Tree Skip, as well as the Silver Serpent Ring. Then I snag a bunch of Titanite Shards in the High Wall, get another Estus Shard, snag some of these Embers off the ground because I'm going to need them for later, and then I go ahead and trigger the cutscene for Vord. Because running all the way back there just for him to spawn on the opposite side of the arena just wastes a lot of time that I really don't have. Back at Firelink, I boost my Estus to 6, I upgrade my Axe to plus 1, put another level into health, and then give the birds a black and a normal firebomb for a titanite chunk and a titanite shard. Now we get to the part that shows how important having the extra starting health is. The run to Vord isn't short by any means, but you can make it shorter by parkouring off the rooftops. You take a little bit of fall damage by doing this, but for my plan, if I was fast enough it wouldn't really matter. I figured if I would be able to make it into the fog gate and have just enough time to pop an ember, I'd have enough healing to survive the poison and maybe even take a hit or two. And that's exactly how it went down. I managed to not take a single hit, and the battle axe absolutely shredded him. Something weird that did happen though, is when Vord is charging his frost breath, he's supposed to be staggerable if you slam his head with a charge dart too. But for some reason it didn't work. Chillin. Another easy first try, man. Now I talked to Yol for a few free levels in the future, circled back to get Grey Rat so he can give me the blue Tearstone Ring, and then continue on the way to Great Wood where I pick up an undead bone shard to boost the acid ceiling. Great Wood was another boss that ate up a lot of time. Before the fight even started, I had used two Estus, and I had 80% health left. With how often he likes to spam his AoE little juice pit move, there wasn't a lot of room for error, which I had to learn the hard way at first. On my second attempt, there were a couple of times that I burst an egg, and instead of him getting stunned, he still did an attack anyway, which caught me off guard. I was cutting it a little close at the end, and I had to use an ember, which is good that I did, because I got hit immediately after. I burst your shit.
I've never had that happen. You're still doing moves. My game broken. What is this? I do that. Alright, die. Hurry up. I ended up transposing Vort Soul into the Pontiff's left eye ring, which heals you with successive attacks. I like spamming R1, and I needed all the extra healing I could get, so this seems like a solid choice. I didn't know what weapon I wanted to end up using for the rest of the run. So for the time being, I just went ahead and got my favorite weapon, the Aerithyll Straight Sword. It looks badass, and the next couple of bosses we had to fight were weak to frost, so it's a win-win. I went back to Firelink to get a Twinkling Titanite, and then got it to plus one. After picking up the Grass Crest Shield for some stamina regen, and then doing a little bit of ladder cheesing, it was time for the Crystal Sage. It also takes a little bit of time getting to. The Aerithyll Sword made short work of her though. R1s did some pretty good damage, and the frost procs absolutely destroyed the health bar. Okay. She's getting dumped. I realized it was phase two for a second. So I have the music off. <laughs> okay, one more hit. Be good. It's not her. Okay, we're good. Good thing I hit again. Thought she was bad after that last one. That ass lived on a pixel. With Sage done, I backtracked a little bit to pick up the Cellsword Twin Blades. I still wasn't sure what weapon I was going to use for most of the run, but I knew that speedrunners like to use the Twin Blades, so I figured they must be pretty good. I head back to Firelink to buy a dagger for when I get the Farron Keep later, get my free levels from Yule, and then grab an Estus and an Undead Bone Shard on my way to Deacon's. The path to unlock the first shortcut at Deacon's is pretty long, with quite a large number of enemies, so getting to it alive and with enough health to actually unlock the door was a little difficult, and when I finally made it to the elevator... What? Are you alive still? What? What the fuck, man? Safe to say I got a little butt hurt, and I just decided to come back later. In the meantime, I went to help Sigurd kill the demon, and then I picked up Flynn's ring, and the Chloranthi ring. At this point, I forgot I effectively only had three ring slots, because I needed the life ring to poison me, so I only ended up using Flynn's ring for now. After dying a little bit more, I finally managed to unlock the first shortcut. I make it through to the second shortcut pretty easily, and then I head to Deacon's. Deacon's were an absolute breeze. 
Because of Pontiff's Ring, I really didn't even have to worry about having to heal unless I got slammed by a few too many attacks in a row. I think the way the ring worked is because it regains life on successive attacks. Basically every time I attacked, I hit multiple enemies. So it would count that one attack as multiple attacks. So I could spam R1 on the giant crowd of enemies and just get giga healing for it. Vegans were also weak to frost, so that helped a lot as well. Pontiff's healing ring is kind of going off right now. Can you do that? But that's fine. Okay, okay, okay. Easy. On to Farron Keep. I grabbed an Estus Shard, and then I realized the poison meter isn't building up. So I had to go mod the files again to fix that. Now I'm able to be poisoned while also being super poisoned, which seemed a little dangerous. So I had to use the dagger sword art to make my way through the swamp as fast as possible. I then get an undead bone shard, pick up these ashes for unlimited titanite shards, take down the stray demon, kill this crystal lizard for a large shard, and give Abyss Watchers a try. The first phase was easy enough. Just spam R1, proc frost, backstab, R1 a couple more times, and then phase one is done. The second phase should have been a similar story, but there were a couple of times where I just got slammed by the fire a little too much, and then I ended up dying to poison before I could get a heal off. I also couldn't get a backstab off to save my life in phase two. I had to burn an ember in my last attempt, then even that was a close call. But I managed to end up getting a backstab to finish him off. to the fire eater, dude. The fact that that's not a backstab is absolutely criminal. Thank you, Backstab. I'm finally going through. Okay. Why oh, is that so hard? Wolnir was a boss that should have been an easy first try, but it turns out his fog really, really hurts. But at least the run back wasn't too bad at this point, and I had more than enough healing to make up for it. Making our way toward the smoldering lake, we pick up the black blade, because I thought having the parry as a sword art would be nice. We also pick up some large titanite shards. Old Demon King got me a couple times, not because it was hard, I just got nicked by some random moves. Biggest problem with him was the fire rings and the meteors that he summons. These are just huge time sinks that make you run away and don't allow you to attack, so it just eats away your health pool like crazy.
I'm not being slow on here. This part's gonna eat up so much HP. I'll wait. That's fine, I'll wait. so hard to turn my brain on before heading on to pontiff i nab another undead bone shard and then upgrade the black blade i wanted to use it against pontiff for the parry because that seemed like it could be fun but as it turns out the parry timing on its sword skill is very different than what i'm used to so it didn't exactly work out in my favor i quickly gave up on that and just stuck to bare hand parrying the jumping move he does as soon as the fight starts Although he has a couple of attacks you can parry, the timings are a bit harder, so I just didn't bother with those. One of the trickier parts of this fight is just being able to find the time to heal. As you might know, Pontiff loves to slam me directly in the face as soon as you even think about healing. This led to a couple of damned if you do, damned if you don't situations, where I either died of poison or I died of Pontiff while trying to heal. The other tricky part was phase two. Two Pontiffs both attacking you meant more time in between being able to attack, and my health bar is on a timer. So I had to rush down Pontiff as much as possible to try to counteract this. Just that easy. After Pontiff, I decided to switch to the Cellsword Blades and give them a shot. And then I picked up the Easterner's Ashes for unlimited shards from the Firelink Hag so I can get the swords up to plus six. Going into Aldrich, a couple of things had me worried. The first thing was his arrows, especially in the second phase. The second concern was the orbs especially since for some reason Aldrich loves spamming them whenever I fight him. The problem with these moves, as you can probably guess, 
Just the amount of time that they just soak up. I guess I hit the RNG jackpot on this run though, because he didn't cast arrows a single time and only cast the orbs once. I also did a good job of baiting out the scythe move and getting him stuck on the pillar, which let me stack some good damage on him for free. The cell sword blades are actually insane, which really helped as well. I swear these things feel like they're borderline broken, so it was safe to say I found the weapon I was going to use for the rest of the run. These things kind of, kind of pop it off. I had some bull paper. Would have been it over. Now that Aldrich was beaten, I now also had access to the Sun Princess Ring, which restores health slowly over time. The healing is not astounding by any means, but health regen is health regen as far as I'm concerned. Time to move on to Yorm. I had to do my best to make it through Irithyll Dungeon as quick as possible and to not get hit by the Nun's Gas, because this gas can reduce your health so much that getting hit by enough of it was practically a death sentence for me. After somehow managing to avoid that interaction, I kill this mimic to get another Estus, get a bone shard, and then I have my obligatory die to the easiest boss every run death. Son of a bitch, how did that not go off in time? I first tried Dancer, first tried Osiris, even though it was a bit of a close call. Struggled a few times on champ, just because I kept messing up my dodges, and then also first tried DSA. At this point, the challenge stopped feeling so challenging, so I went ahead and boosted up the super poison damage to 20 HP per second. Going through the Grand Archives, I get the Hidden Titanite Slab to get the Cell Sword Blades at plus 10. With the additional damage boost to my poison, I thought that maybe Twin Princes would be more of a struggle, but I was able to make it to them with only 7 Estus left, and I was still able to take them down on the first try, even though I took more than a couple of stray hits. I ended the fight with zero Estus left, but could have still Embered if I needed to. Easy first phase. Before getting to Ancient Wyvern, I decided to yet again boost the damage up to 25 damage per second. An extra 5 damage may not sound like a lot, but it really added up. 
Especially since the fight for Wyvern isn't really a fight, and it's more just running around forever through a bunch of enemies. I actually startled the time or two on this one, because I had to carefully time when I would heal, because otherwise I would just get nicked by a random enemy and then get murked by the poison. And with that epic boss taken care of, it's on to Nameless King. But before that, I realized I hadn't clicked all the bone shards yet, and I just went ahead and collected the rest of those. Somehow it went over my head that I didn't have Max as this flask either, so I don't get around to that until a little bit later. Between the flying around and the flying up to spew fire down, the first phase of Nameless really likes to take up time, so I had to make the most of the times so I could get some damage off. He's pretty aggressive in phase 2, so finding a good balance between getting damage off and healing was kind of tough at first. To start phase 2 off, I'd pop an ember to full heal to not waste any Estus, and having the extra HP would help just in case I decided to take a hit or two. It's a good thing I did this, because the way the fight ended was one of the crazier things I've had happen to me during a run. It, bro, fuck it. timing. go. Every day of the week we take those. With Nameless out of the way, it was time to start my DLC training arc. In my last challenge video, where I beat the game at level negative 89, I said if enough people wanted me to do the rest of the bosses, I'd do it. And apparently a lot of you guys want me to bash my head against a wall. The biggest problem is, I've only ever gone through the DLCs once in a casual playthrough and never did them again. I know it's probably a hot take, but with bosses like Champions, Grave Tender, Half Light, and the Dual Demons, I thought that the DLC kind of sucked. Needless to say, because of this, I'm pretty inexperienced in these fights. So before I can face them at level negative 89, I'm going to need a Rocky-style training montage. And the next several challenge runs are going to serve that purpose. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. The first phase of Grave Tender was rough for a bit, because I would go to attack one of the wolves, but my positioning would kind of stink. So as soon as I got an attack off, I would get hit once or twice and just have to run back to safety and heal up before I died to poison. Once the wolves were gone, Gravetender wasn't too hard to take care of on his own, just more annoying than anything. He always held his shield up or just dodge spammed, but I was usually able to melt them down pretty fast before the big wolf could show up. Which was good, because if I had to fight them both at the same time, I probably would have been chalked. When the big wolf came in, I was able to stagger him as he was entering phase 2, which let me stack some pretty big damage on it and kill it, pretty much skipping the second phase entirely.
go. Okay, that actually wasn't too bad. Freedy is where I get stuck for a good minute, which I knew was going to happen for multiple reasons. She's very quick, so attacking her first usually wasn't the play, because she could just dash away before I could do any meaningful damage. A lot of my game plan was to wait for her to do certain attacks, like her invisible leap, and then get a backstab off. While she stood up, I'd hit a charged R2 and to follow up with some light attacks. I struggled with landing backstabs consistently for a long time though. The spot you have to stand in for the backstab looks more like a side stab to me, so I'd always be a little off the actual spot and end up hitting her with a light attack instead and not really getting much done. Sometimes I would get lucky and I'd interrupt her during the startup of one of her attacks and she'd just stand there and eat three or four hits. For the second phase, the strat was just to ignore Freed the best I could and solo focus the father. Freed's frost AoE attack made it a little difficult to do that sometimes, but if I could get the father low enough, Freed would stop attacking to start her healing spell. Which was fine with me, because that meant she wasn't attacking me anymore. Even though the father would heal quite a good amount from this, the damage I was able to do while not being bothered by Freed was too much for the healing spell to really keep up with. Now we get to the hardest part, Phase 3. Between beating Phase 2 and Phase 3 starting, there's about 30 seconds where you're just waiting for Free to get back up, meaning I'm taking over 700 damage just waiting for the fight to start again. To combat this, I'd pop an Ember as late as I possibly could so I didn't have to waste any Estus, because I needed those Estus for when I was going to get hit by every move she threw at me. As soon as she gets up, she does her Jumping Black Flame attack, you can pretty much run in a straight line to get behind her to get a backstab off, followed by a charged R2 and some L1s. I really wasn't sure what the play was when she goes invisible in phase 3, so I just ran around like a chicken with the head cut off, hoping to not get hit. For the rest of the fight, it was practically the same strategy as it was for phase 1. Wait until I could get a backstab combo off, or spam L1 widely until she dies. Go, dude. <laughs> At this point, I realized I didn't have max Estus flasks. I think I just wasn't paying attention, and I saw that I had 10, and I thought, yeah, that seems about right. So I went back, picked up all the shards that I missed, and now I finally had max healing. On to the dual demons. I decided to pick off the demon from below first, because the demon in Pain's phase 2 seemed a little bit easier. The demon in pain would usually stay back long enough for me to get the demon from below around half health before he started interfering. And by that point, the demon from below was only a few hits away from being staggered and killed, making it a 1v1. Pain wasn't that much of a pain, I could mostly just walk around behind him, give him back shots until he got staggered. While phase 2 started, I did the same thing I did for free to phase 3, and popped an ember at the last possible second. I had plenty of time, and I had room for error in this phase, because usually I did good enough in the first phase that I would have at least 10 Estus left. The scariest part of phase 2 was just having to run around and let my HP drain as the fireballs kept falling from the sky. Similar to phase 1, 
I could just stand behind him and slam his ass repeatedly, or stand face to face and slash his head. In classic Coach Plague fashion though, I almost threw, but I pulled it off in the end. Jeez, man. Tactical Ember time. Get as long as possible. Most value out of it. So close, dude. I fuck it up. Let's go. While trying to get to the bonfire near Madeira on the bridge, I had this silly little interaction with the Moaning Knight. One of these rooms. Jumped off the edge. <laughs> okay, man. Which is honestly fair enough. If I was called the Moaning Knight, I probably wouldn't be too happy about it either. After a few too many attempts trying to knock Madeira off the bridge, I get to everybody's favorite, Half Light. This guy sucks. That's all I got.
The first problem with Badir was just getting to him. The run to him is by no means short at all. And then you have the drop that goes into the actual arena for the fight. If I wanted to have full health before I even dropped into the fight, that was automatically 3 Estus burned. In the interest of my sanity, I used Cheat Engine to teleport me to the drop, so I didn't have to make that run back every single time. To counteract this, I auto burned 3 Estus so I wouldn't start the fight with healing I wouldn't have otherwise. The fight itself is a lot of health. After trying the Cell Sword Blades a few times, I thought I'd try something different. He's weak to thrust damage, so I tried using the Aerithyll Rapier for a bit, but ultimately decided that just wasn't going to work out, and I switched back to the Cell Sword. I had no idea what this dude's moves were, so a lot of the deaths I had were just learning what he did. Not only that, Madir has this thing that he does that I like to call wasting time and running away like a little <laughs> He has quite a few moves where he does this, and I just had to chase after him while my health kept ticking down. Now it's time for the big bad himself, Gale. Phase 1 didn't give me too much trouble. After a couple tries, I started to be able to consistently get to Phase 2 with either 11 or 12 Estus left. I struggled with Phase 2, simply because I literally had no idea what he was doing half the time. The biggest issue was just his cape hitting right after he did, which was my cause of death just about every single time.
Swinging. <sighs> Let's go, dude. It's stressful. Dude, Soul Ascender is about to get <laughs> up. It's not gonna be pretty. After going through every single other boss in the game, it just really wasn't a fair fight for Cinder. I was super leveled, had plus 10 cell swords, max healing. It was practically a walk in the park. Easiest phase one of my entire life. Yeah, that one hurt a little bit.